Hi guys. How are you all doing? Everybody in your head. Tea, got some coffee all the way. So my name is JC. I'm from a company called The Cronus. I'm sure most of you have heard of us. We've got quite a large footprint in Germany and in the rest of Europe and in Singapore. Uh, we've just entered the South African market a couple of years ago. Well, we've been here for a while, but not really making any progress and not really in focus on it. So, um, Acronis has decided to put a local footprint here. So, I am the sales engineer for Africa, and we've got Tina, my colleague at the back there. She is the account manager for Africa. And we've now partnered with Redcon, which we're very, very excited about. And the product that they've chosen to go with is um, a product called Acronis Backup Cloud. So Acronis Backup Cloud is a program that runs in the cloud, obviously, and that's where all the, um, all the backups are kept with the option of replicating to a local storage as well. So just a little bit more about Acronis. We've been in the technology business for 14 years. We're 700 plus employees. At the moment, we're more about 900 plus all over the world in 145 countries and in 20 languages as well. And the 20 languages is quite a nice little feature that you can customize every different client to have its own language, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. So we're running a little bit late, so I'm going through this just a little bit quick. If you guys have a little bit of questions, um, just hold it till the end. So we're worldwide recognized by a lot of the reports that you'll see here. Gartner, for example, Forrester, another one, PC International, um, a whole bunch of different application uh, um, publishers that, that recognize us. We're famous for our full backup and running uh, running system technology for our universal restore. So for those of you who don't know what a re universal restore is, we can restore to any car from any hardware to any hardware or from any physical to virtual, from virtual to physical, physical to cloud and so on. So it really is a universal restore application. Um, we've also got continuous innovations like we saw just now, we've got more than 300 uh, different engineers that work on all of our packages all the time. So our, uh, we've got 20 PhDs as well, 20 plus PhDs of people that are just absolutely sitting grinding at it all day. So at the moment we are on a Cronus Backup Cloud version 7 that's just taken place and that means that you can back up your Oracle, your VMware, absolutely everything. So this shows you a little bit more about what a Cronus can do. While we call the any, any data application, we can protect any kind of um, archiving, backup, cloud storage, and any kind of deployment as well, as, my, as uh, Kevin said just before he was here before me, we work very well with Microsoft Azure, with Amazon, with public cloud, vendor cloud, partner cloud, just about any kind of cloud deployment you need. And then we've also got any kind of workload, so whether you're running physical machines, virtual machines, applications, different kind of mobile applications, um, any kind of cloud storage that you're running, Office 365 for example is the new uh, feature that's been included. So if it's going to be something that you're going to go with that is a very, very nice selling feature for every Office 365 license you sell to book that together with one gigabyte of data or two gigabytes of storage. And that's a, it makes it very, very simple for people to go, okay, cool, if, my, if I have my mail and I've got a backup of my mail, I can retrieve any kind of mail item. So whether it is just a mail or whether it's a contact or one calendar note, if you've lost your entire mail, three, uh, Office 365 mailbox, you can just re go and retrieve any kind of data from the current storage cloud. We also back up absolutely to anywhere. So the cloud is the first part for, for this application. That's why it's Cronus Cloud. And you can also replicate onto disks, tapes, NAS, SANS, and so on. We've also got any kind of recovery. So whether you're wanting to recover just specific files or folders or mailboxes or databases, you can do that. We also work with all sorts of applications. So if you've got an Active Directory or Exchange or SQL Server, all of those kind of applications can be recovered granularly as well. So if you've lost an entire SQL database, but you just need to get one instance back, you can go and do the recovery for just one instance. Like I said as well, we do the similar hardware and migration. So whether it's physical to virtual, virtual to phys virtual, virtual to physical, physical to cloud, it's all supported. And then also replication. So we've got five stage replication and then high availability modes as well. So because you're running everything in the cloud, if at any point your hardware goes down, you are able to spin up a virtual machine in the cloud and just continue working in the way that you were before um, with minimal seconds of downtime. Right, so just to show you what we back up from Microsoft, uh, Azure, Windows Servers, PCs, Exchange, all the different types of applications, and then Office 365 has been added in. But it's not just Microsoft applications, we also do Amazon, Linux, uh, all the different Apple products, as well as your uh, mobile devices like Android and VMware as well. 
how do we compare in the market to some of the other uh, application vendors that there are? So we've got Commvault firstly. Commvault's got a different SKU for every kind of application that, you, that you're going to be backing up or every kind of instance that you're going to be backing up. So that becomes very expensive, it's very complex and on the bright side it is very robust. Semantic, Semantic's got a different product for every different kind of application that you need to back up to. So if you're going to back up a SQL server, it's going to be one SKU. If you're going to be back, backing up a virtual server, it's going to be one SKU. If you're going to be backing up an application, it's going to be one SKU, and so on, and so on, and so on. Where with the Kronos, everything is per gigabyte. So when you're backing up to the cloud, everything is per gigabyte. You're paying for, let's say, your 10 gigabytes. And if you are running five servers or two virtual machines or five applications, it doesn't matter. It all goes according to the gigabytes, which just makes it easier for you to sell and easier for your customer to understand. Veeam, while well, Veeam has now got physical support, this might be a little bit of an old slide, but the physical support is something brand new to them, so they, they're not very good with uh, restoring to differential hardware yet, and they definitely don't do bare metal recovery, um, where with the Cronus, everything is easy, complete, and safe. So the presentation isn't the best part of this little demonstration that we're going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of a demo for you guys from two sides. So I'll show you the demo from a reseller side if you're going to be reselling the product on. And I'll show you the, um, the demo from an end user side. So how easy it is to set up a backup, how easy it is to um, do any kind of recovery or restorations as well. Just this. Yeah. So a big question that people will have um, when, you, when you sell them the service is uh, we know that the data is hosted in the cloud, but where exactly is your cloud? So Acronis has got 12 data centers all across the world. The data centers that we use are up in Europe. At the moment it is France. And for customers that go, well, you know what, um, I'm a government client. I can't send my data outside of the country. It's not a problem. From Q3, we'll have our own data center locally, and that will be hosted somewhere in Johannesburg. So those customers can just hold on just a little bit longer and then we'll be in the southern the country as well. All right, just from a system resources or from, from a partner resource application, uh, Acronis has got something called the partner vendor partner portal. I think most of the vendors do. When you sign up to the partner portal, there are two types of exams that you can go and do. You can go and do the Acronis Sales Professional, which is about 90 minutes long, and you can do the Acronis uh, Cloud Specialist, which is about 60 minutes long. And this would show you exactly how to sell the product, it would show you exactly how to integrate it, um, how exactly everything works, how the APIs work, if you're wanting to integrate the APIs with, like I said, you can improve, inter integrate with Azure or integrate with Amazon, it will show you how all of that works. Alright, so before we go on to the questions, let me start a little demo for you guys quickly. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as a reseller.
<laughs> no, maybe it's his internet connection that's not working like that, isn't it? So I'm logging in now as a reseller and you'll see on the side here there's a bunch of different groups that you've got. So when you sign in as a reseller you'll see that your group, your company name will be right at the top. That'll be your company name and every reseller, every reseller that you sign on under you would be below that. Because it's multi-tiered and multi-tenanted you can, uh, you can sign up a reseller to sign up more resellers to sign up more resellers to sign up more resellers until it eventually at the end it comes to an end user and that end user cannot sign up anybody under themselves so I don't know how many of you guys sell to resellers how many of you sell to end users put up your hand if you sell to resellers no you only sell to end users all right cool so once you've signed up uh, when you're signing up an uh, end user or reseller it's very very simple when you sign in with your own username at the bottom you'll have an uh, option to add a group Adding a group is very, very easy. You'll put in your, your customer's name. And then you'll put in the unique identifier. So this is typically what the customer's account number is with you, and that just makes it simple for you to trace where the data is coming to and going from. Alright, so you can select what, what language the customer is going to be under, and most likely it's going to be English. And under storage, until you've added a different storage device for them, you guys will only have the one option of the of France, and that will be the only option that you can enter. And then the customer's details, so Details. So we'll never actually see the details. You'll see everything, all the all the clients that will be under you. You will see, but we we won't get to see any clients of yours 
that I'm going to use. We'll, we'll see a company name, but that is all that we'll see. So all data is encrypted from end to end. So when you when you sign up a customer, all the data that they've got when when they um, uploading it to our site, it, is, it gets encrypted with 256-bit AES encryption, which is obviously military grade encryption. Um, once the customer has been added, you can see a customer has been added there. You can then go and add an uh, administrator for that customer, so who's going to be doing their backups. In the case where you're wanting to be doing backup as a service, you can also say that all the um, all your IT people's policy should be inherent to your customers. So that means that you don't have to keep logging out of your portal. You can just stay logged into your portal, see all your customer and managers and manage their backups for them. All right, so in this example, I've already added myself as, a, as an administrator. So I'm an administrator, so I can manage all of the accounts that's under here. And I've set up myself as a, as a customer already. So we'll see under the main account here, there are different ones. I've set up Johannesburg, which is a, typically a reseller. And then that would be my end user called SE Labs. And there I am as a, as an account holder. So I've logged in as the, a reseller, but I can still go and manage the backups. So clicking on managing backups, it'll show me all the different PCs or servers that's been added onto this account already. In this case, I've just added by myself. So I'm going to show you how to add a backup very, very quickly. Using this application is so, so simple. Adding a backup is very easy. You just click add and you say, uh, what are we backing up? Are we backing up a workstation? Are we backing up a server or a mobile device? Any type of virtual host or any type of applications? So if you're going to be backing up the 365 host, you'll be getting on 365 host, and that will download the backup agent for the 365 host for you, which you'll just install then. All right, so once the, it tells you there how to do the installation, once the installation's done, you'll be protected, and your, three, your Office 365 host will fall in under here. All right, you can then go and look at different kind of backups that's been done. So I've not done any backups for my machine yet. Um, but it will show you the, the cloud storage or the other storage that you are using. And if you're wanting to add different kinds of storage, you can add your own local um, local folder or local uh, server to the storage as well. And that just means that all your data will be replicated for a local for local usage. So what I also always recommend to people is that you use the three to one rule: three types of backup, two locally, and one offsite. Right, so when you go and see your, um, your different applications or your different devices that you've got, making backups or setting backup plans are easy. So you can, if you click on backup now, it'll start the backup. If you click on settings, then it'll show you all the different options that you've got. So if you've got your, um, your backup plans that you've decided on, the backup plan that I've decided on is I just wanted to backup files and folders from my C drive, from my documents and I wanted to store it on the cloud. But adding a new backup plan is as simple as adding a backup plan and going through the different, what do we want to back up? And then you can select the entire machine. So if you are going to be using disaster recovery, obviously you want to back up an entire machine. And then application backup, if you're going to be backing up any applications like SQL Server, Exchange, Active Directory, and so on, you click this in here. So what the difference is, if you decide not to use the application backup, you will still be able to uh, restore those applications, but you won't be able to restore them granularly. So you'll have to you'll have to restore the entire database and not just one item in the database. If you select to have the backup done by application, then you'll be able to get um, different parts of that application restored to you as well. Then where do you want to be backing up to? So if you've selected different types of backup modes, then you'll be able to say from where you're wanting to back it up to, otherwise in this case it's going to be just the cloud. That's going to ask you when do you want to schedule the backup for. So the backup will be scheduled in my case Monday to Friday at 11 o'clock. And how long do I want to keep the backup? So these retention rules also depend on how much space you're going to be using up. So if you are saying I'm going to be backing up, my, I'm going to be keeping my data for the last six months, and um, it's a monthly for six months, weekly every week, and um, then I'm going to be keeping my data only for six months. So if you are um, wanting to be compliant to what the, what the law says, then you've got to keep backup somewhere for five years. So a lot of people switch their tank backups for cloud backups instead. Doing a recovery is just as simple. So you click on the recovery icon. 
I don't know, ask you what do you want to recover? Do you want to recover an uh, entire machine or do you just want to download files? So if you just download files, it will open up for you an explorer type of window from where you can then go and select the different files that you're wanting to restore and it's very, very simple to do your restoration that way. All right, so it also shows you what the different uh, options that you've got in the machine. So the agent that I've got installed is just the agent for Windows and the operating system is Microsoft Windows 10 and a little bit more about the, the hardware that's on my machine. Under activities, it'll show you the different activities that I've done on that specific machine and you can see there's not been really anything much done. And then if I wanted to delete, delete this machine altogether, I can simply go and delete it from there. All right, so it's very easy to add your backups and to see what's going on and to, um, to have all your customers listed. So the one last thing that I do want to show you is what happens in the event where a customer decides that they've stopped paying you. Let's hope that that happens. Unfortunately, that's it. All right, so with the premises cloud while this is loading, when you, you've got two ways to disable a customer. So if a customer hasn't made payment for 30 or 60 days, you can go and just disable their account. That's not going to delete anything. It's just going to stop their backups from happening and it's going to stop their restorations from happening. So it's very simple. If a customer then after 30 days still hasn't made a payment, you're still getting billed for the data that they've got. So it's in your best interest to then tell the customer, can't afford to keep carrying you any longer, so we're going to delete your account instead. So you'll see under the accounts option here, where I've got add group. I can also go disable a customer, and by disabling a customer, it just means that they've got no longer they've got no functionality. They can't log into the site. They can't do any of the information retrievals. They can't do any uploads. It's all very, very on pause for them. Once you've done that, you can also then go and delete the customer. And if you delete the customer, you've got to be very, very careful because you'll delete absolutely everything about this customer. All of their, all of their backups, first of all, all of their accounts, all of their logins, all of their absolutely everything. All right, so we've got about 10 minutes left for questions. I'm sure you guys have lots of questions. Let's get to them. Yes. Yes, I see on the list of uh, comparison. How do you compare your product compared to Cloudberry? Cloudberry Backup. Uh, so I've not used Cloud. I've not used Cloudberry very much. Um, those are the products that I've used, and also uh, Max Backup. I've used Mac Backup before. So the, I think that the, the biggest difference between our product and the competing products that you'll find in the market at the moment is the way that it is being priced through Rentron per gigabyte and not per application and not per hardware device. That will be the biggest difference. Also, I think when you look at the different quotes, when you're getting quotes, our product is com um, very highly competitive in pricing. Yes. Sorry, so the pricing is the gigabyte stored in the cloud. That's right, yes. And the context, once you use cloud, it's only local storage. You can't. So it gets stored onto the cloud and replicated locally, okay. not, the other, not the other way around. Yeah. So technically on the back end, it doesn't really work like that. On the back end, it gets stored locally and then replicated okay. to the cloud. But as soon as you turn off the cloud storage, then you can't do any of the backups anymore. So you may have that component Definitely. Does the backup keep previous versions? Or is it only the last version of the file that's backed up? So All if right. you're writing the same file, can you go back to some of your Good question. So it does, it does do um, backups with uh, differentials. So if I do a backup today of my entire C drive, and tomorrow I do the same backup, every piece of information that is the same will be deduplicated and will be kept as a short link, and then everything that's been changed or added will be added as a new backup. So yes, you are able to go back to whatever frame you've changed two weeks ago or a month ago. So Elaine, Elaine will have to tell you about the pricing. I don't know what, what pricing she's decided on. Uh, what I can tell you is that it is about eight times cheaper than Azure. And we do integrate with Azure, so if that's what you, where you want to keep your data, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we also have about a third of the price of Beam. So exact how much you'll have to ask your lab. And uh, is there a device fee for installation or is it uh, you buy an amount of storage? You buy an amount of storage. So let's say 
there is also a compression ratio in this. So if you've got, let's say, you've got a server that you're wanting to back up and it's a terabyte of data, what I would suggest is that you buy the terabyte of data and do your backup that way because you'd be, the compression ratio for videos and the compression ratio for pictures are a lot bigger than what it is for documents by themselves. The question I have is that why that you know, how would you sell these products? Like they could be at least to start to uh, uh, there's so many actually uh, uh, free actually uh, uh, platform actually so how would you attract the customer to say this is better at least compared to all these free at least that's outside? Alright, so the Cronus is the fastest in the market, it's the fastest backup there is, it's also got the highest compression ratios. Um, if you want a spec sheet on what the differences are exactly, I've got something like that that I can give you um, that shows you how it compares to all the other applications and what the compression ratios are and how long it takes you to back up and how much bandwidth it uses and so on. So it's a much better product um, than most of the other products that there are in the market. And as for the free products that are in the market, it doesn't do any of the duplication or it doesn't do any of the replication where this does both of those things as well. Security wise, because you find it with the Dropbox, with the Skybar, with the so many platforms. So surely, for you to convince the customer that this is a better platform as compared to this one here, security wise, it has to be more anti there is, there is a lot of security that's included in this that's not included in free products. And also, that what makes this better is that you can set up your, your backup plans and you can set up your disaster recovery scenarios and you can also spin up VMs in the cloud when your server goes down. So it doesn't really compare to a Dropbox or a free service that's available out there. Even when you do the Dropbox paid for version, this is still got a lot more feature rich than what Dropbox is. With the recoveries, um, you know, I've used Acronis before, the, you know, the enterprise and those. And it was always, oh no, you backed it up with that version, now you've got to pay again to recover. No, since, since version 11, that's not a case anymore. Like it, all the, all the um, products are now completely backwards compatible. So if you've got a version, version 11.2 and we, uh, we, we've upgraded to 11.7, all your data is still there and it's still recoverable exactly the same way that it was. Do I have to buy a separate application to restore? No. So as long as your license is valid, you can have free upgrades to the latest application and you don't need to buy anything else to restore to your data at any point. Absolutely. So while you're setting up your customer there, I think I might have missed that part, while you're setting up a customer, you can set them up with a 30-day trial and they are able to use the backup service. If you choose for them to have unlimited storage for that 30 days, you can have that as well. Um, and just remember that after day 31, if you have not cancelled that trial, it becomes live automatically and then you'll be liable for paying the bill afterwards. Anybody else? So um, Retron will bill you and you'll bill your customers. So how it works in our little talent tree is we're going to be billing you at the top there and then you'll get a report of all your customers and it's up to you how you bill them afterwards. So there isn't a recommended retail price. So you, as a reseller, you'll be working out your own price for this. So try and be as competitive as you can without, without killing your neighbor. Giveaway here for so the best question. There we go. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, you'll see that on your schedules, on your little scenarios, there is another kind of session happening. It'll be the same as this one. So. If